Hello and welcome to today's game, matching up the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Chicago Blackhawks here in Chicago, Illinois. The Leafs are coming into this game 4-4, four and four, and here are your starting goaltenders. James Reimer, all four wins with the Leafs for this season, and Nikolai Happy Bullen yet to have his first win. But before we get into the action, let's check out the injury report for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Carl Gunnarsson in the last game suffered a concussion and is out seven weeks. And Franzen is coming off of an ankle injury that wasn't too serious. And he is still able to play in this game. And he will play a big role as he will be playing first deep hair minutes with Dion Phaneuf. But the game is underway. The Blackhawks win the draw. Kane back over to Keith. Duncan Keith bringing it in the zone and dumping it down. James Reimer behind the net to retrieve the puck. Franzen up to Kessel. Kessel gets the puck taken away by Marion Hosa. And Seabrook takes a nice shot, but that was stopped by Reimer. Now Jonathan Taves kicks it out of the zone and out. Duncan Keith passes it across ice to Marion Hosa. And Marion Hosa gets poke checked by James Van Riemsdyk. Now on the rush, Van Riemsdyk deeks around Seabrook and back in front of the net, but Kessel misses the one timer. And that pass is intercepted by Tyler Bozak. Now Cody Franzen at the point. Franzen circles back around and he's going to take a slap shot but that's a nice save from Nikolai Happy Bullen. Bozak gets the puck back from Taves again and he takes a snap shot but that's stopped. Blocked in front of the net. And Bozak another interception. A nice glove save from Happy Bullen off of the Bozak slap shot. But now the Blackhawks will get it out of the zone and Taves will bring it in and a nice hit, but saw it in front of the net, and he was stoned, sorry, not sawed, Sharp was stoned in front of the net by James Reimer. Clarkson now with the puck along the sideboards. Clarkson slowing it down, and he's going to circle back around, all the way around. He's going to cut in front of the net, and a nice shot, but that's saved by Happy Bullen. Now Nick Letty up the sod and up the Sharp. Sharp coming down the wing. Deeks around Gardner. And a nice backhander, but that's easily steered away by Reimer. And in front of the net, a nice save. Reimer coming up big. Sharp still with the puck. Back to Koska. Former Toronto Maple Leaf is turned away by former teammate James Reimer. Now David Clarkson coming back in. His line mates are making a change. And a nice backhander, but that's turned away. David Boland back to Cody Franzen. Franzen over to his new deep hair, deep hair mate. I'm not sure if that's correct, but Fenef blocks the shot. Mason Raymond in the third line is out there now, and that's an errant pass from Michael Koska. Michael Hanzus now with the puck, and he's circling back around, and now Koska to Piri. Back to Oduya and Koska. It, and Peary, he's got some space. But he is rocked by Dion Phaneuf. Phaneuf has recently come back to getting his big hits, um, his physical side back out. I'm not sure if Eric Wallowitz gave him a pep talk, or, pep talk or something. He's fighting for a new contract, but now the Leafs are in the offensive zone again. Kessel circling around with the puck. He comes into the side and a nice slap shot, but that's turned away by Happy Bullen. And Happy Bullen. Throws the puck back out. Peary with the puck now. And Peary takes a low shot. And that's a tough save for Reimer. But he did make the stop. Kessel. Deeks. Takes another slap shot. But that's wide. 
And now Peary dumps it back down, and Paul Ranger is going to go back to retrieve the puck. Oh, and sorry, I didn't realize how much time was left, and that's the end of the first period. No stoppages in that first period. That doesn't happen too often. Straight up uh, action, constant. And so, a lot of action in that first period, as there was no stoppages. But we will see you back here for the second. 0-0, zero, zero, no score. Hello and welcome back here to the United Center here in Chicago, Illinois for the second period of this scoreless match between the Hawks and Leafs. Both first lines are out to start the second period and the draw is once again won by the Chicago Blackhawks. Seabrook over to Kane. Patrick Kane held up against the boards and it is taken away by James Van Riemsdyk. And Van Riemsdyk takes a shot but that is turned away by the pads of Happy Bullen and another two chances from Bozak and Van Riemsdyk, but both are strongly turned away by Happy Bullen. He's been turning out to be a very strong backup for the Le for not the Leafs, the Blackhawks. Was starting goaltender Corey Crawford needing a rest tonight. But here comes Kessel. Kessel takes a snapshot, but that's turned away by the glove of Happy Boone. And sorry, correction, that was not a snapshot, that was a wrist shot. The Blackhawks are coming into the leaf zone, but it is turned over by Hosa to Joffrey Lupel. And Lupel tries a little shovel pass to uh, Clarkson across the ice, but that is errant, as now it is dumped down by the Hawks. And Sod is ran over by Mark Frazier, who has been bumped up in the lineup in place of Franzen, who had to take over first deep hair minutes. Duncan Keith across the ice to Sharp. Sharp dumps it around to Brandon Sod. Sod loses the puck and goes straight to Joffrey Lupul. Now Kadri, first time we've said his name today, but uh, his cross crease pass to Nikolai Kuhlman was off the mark and intercepted. And a big hit from Cody Franz, and that's what Randy Carlisle likes to see. He's been trying to get his physical side out. Now, Nikolai Kuhlman and the third line are out. Kuhlman, a saucer pass over to Ma Raymond, didn't get there. Intercepted by the Blackhawks, and Brian Bickle dumps it back down. Cody Franzen ran over by Andrew Shaw. And Koska a point shot, but that's third away, and no! The Leafs give up a goal with 7.20 left in the second period. A rebound shot from the Koska point shot. Brian Bickle on the goal, his first of the season. As you see, a low wrister that, w for some reason, Fanuf or Reimer couldn't corral off his pad. He tried to cover it, and then that left short side. Wide open for Bickle just to slot that puck home. His first of the year, as we already mentioned. Koska and Andrew Shaw on the assists. Letty and Jarmusson passing back and forth. And Letty's going to keep it. And he's going to pass it back over to Jarmusson. Jarmusson, sorry, I'm having trouble pronouncing today. Um, dumps it down. And Jake Gardner up to Phil Kessel. Kessel. Gonna take a wrist shot, but that's blocked. Gardner pinching in to keep the puck. Fran Van Riemsdyk over to Mark Frazier, and he Mark Frazier turns the puck over. And now Hosa with the puck. Hosa dancing around. He takes a soft shot, but that's deflected wide. Phil Kessel now with the puck again. Kessel, he's going to take it up the middle of the ice. He's got speed and a nice soft shot, but that's turned away by Javi Bullen and covered. Now Bozak and Taves in front of the net, jousting a bit. Excuse me while I take a drink, my throat's getting sore. Ah. And so here comes the fourth line for the Leafs. We didn't see them at all in the first period. But now Brandon saw it over to Seabrook. Gardner goes to finish his check on Seabrook. And Frazier pushes Sharp into the boards. Now McClement chasing after Sharp. Now Brandon saw it with the puck. Dumps it back down to Sharp, but he, Sharp misses the puck, and 
Leo Komarov, who came into this game in place of Fraser McLaren, gets the puck, and McClement with a shot. Three seconds left in the second period, and that will be the end of your second. one nothing. the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blackhawks had a lot of pressure in that period with some stellar goaltending from Nikolai Happy Bullen. Let's take a look at some of those replays. Reimer also had a good period. He just let in one soft goal. As you see here, Happy Bullen was on fire. He had some hard shots to stop. But at the end of the second period, it is 1-0 after that Brian Bickle goal. We'll see you back here for the third. Hello and welcome back to the United Center. It is one nothing for the Hawks. The Leafs have are having a hard time trying to beat Nikolai Habibulin. But for the third time, both first lines come out and the draw this time is won by the Toronto Maple Leafs and Franz and dumps it back around. Van Riemsdyk chasing after the puck. Hosa got to it first though. Keith playing with the puck. Up to Taves. Taves, an offside pass to Hosa, and Dion Phaneuf takes a late hit, and here comes Seabrook. It's going to be Phaneuf versus Seabrook. Seabrook gets an uppercut, and another shot. Phaneuf is losing this fight so far. He loses his grip, and he gets a shot in there. And Phaneuf taken down, but he gets back up. And Phaneuf, some haymakers being thrown at Seabrook. A few missed punches, and Phaneuf is getting back in this fight. Both helmets are off, a missed uppercut, and Phaneuf wins the fight. He comes back from being down pretty bad in that fight. And Phaneuf trying to pump up the crowd. But it'll be interesting to see how Brendan Shanahan says about that late hit. That could have been very dangerous. Hosa's had a history of injuries. Just remember that Rafi Torres hit that got 20 some odd games. The longest suspension in NHL history. But that will be something to worry about after the game. Some action really quickly in the first period, in the third period, sorry. But now David Clarkson with the puck. Clarkson deking a spinorama, and he is pushed into the boards by Keith. But Keith is pushed into the boards, and, Dave, and David Clarkson misses the net. Clarkson over to Franzen, and Franzen's shot is turned away by Javi Woolen. No, Patrick Sharp with the puck. He gets poked, and the poke goes straight to Kruger, and a nice glove save from Reimer. And now Gardner. With sod in front of the net. Not sure what's going on there. But Reimer a stellar save on Marcus Kruger. Kruger is getting a shot this year with the big club. He played a bit last year. Um, I didn't see too many games of him. Because I live in an area that isn't near... Chicago, so I don't get the games, but Hosa in front of the net, a nice blocker save from Reimer. But yeah, I we do have center ice, but the Hawks games are always on later, and I like to go to bed a bit earlier. But Van Riemsdyk, a nice shot, but that misses the net. And TJ Brennan pinches up and decks Patrick Kane. Now Kessel playing around with the puck, being pressured by Marion Hosa. The 281's going at it. But Kessel in front of the net, and that goes off of Bozak's skate and wide. Bozak retrieves the puck in front of Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk still has control of the puck. A spinorama, and he gets high stick by Jonathan Tapes in front of the batting at it. And it is turned away by Happy Boolin. But it's only going to be two minutes. Van Riemsdyk is not bleeding. But as you see here, an errant lift the stick hits him right in the face. Hard not to miss that one. And the Leafs are on the power play. Perfect time to maybe get back in this game. They are they have the 13th best penalty kill, but right off penalty power play. Wow, I messed that up pretty bad. Sorry about that. But Kessel bringing it back into the zone. Kessel dancing around. He's hit, stood up, but Franzen with the puck. Down low to Kadri. Kadri skating up to and passing it to Kessel, but Kessel's shot goes wide. Dion Phaneuf back to the point to Kadri. Kadri takes a wrist shot, but that's turned away. And D Duncan Keith shoots it back down the ice. Franzen with the puck now. Saucers it up to 
Kadri, but it's intercepted. And Patrick Sharp takes a nice slap shot, but that's turned away by Reimer. And uh, a big hit on Sharp there by Kadri, I think that was. But now Franzen bringing it up the ice. Maybe pulling a wrist line in? No, not quite. Wrist line and have that big goal for Finland to win them the gold medal, their first since 1998 in the World Juniors a few days ago. Maybe Franzen was thinking he could do the same thing, except scoring a goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs to tie it. I don't know. But Johnson Taves takes it, hits the net and takes it off the pegs, which will bring up a face off in the Toronto Maple Leafs zone as it was Franzen who pushed him into the net. Boland loses the draw to Jonathan Taves, but here we go. Two on one. Raymond. Ah, Kuhlman. Oh, but Raymond in front of the net and scores. M Mason Raymond scores to make it one all. Mason Raymond's third goal of the year, assisted by Kuhlman. As you see, it was a two on one. Raymond passed it back to Kuhlman. Kuhlman missed the hit the net, but it was saved by. Happy Bullen, and then Raymond got it in the corner, took it back out front in the net, and backhanded it home around Happy Bullen. But now a big hit on oh, Patrick Kane. Not much he could do there to get it out of the way. He just had to absorb it as best he could. But now Jomison up to Marion Hosa, who seems to be fine after that Dion Phaneuf hit, and he gets stood up again by Phaneuf. Wow. But Phaneuf probably will get a suspension off for that hit. That was bad. Lupul with the puck behind the net. He's going to slow it down. And he's being chased out around by Patrick Kane. Up to David Clarkson, his line mate. Clarkson stops. Goes in front of the net and a nice backhander. But that's turned away. And Phaneuf chasing after Nick Letty after the Lupul hit. Oh boy. Phaneuf and Jimmy Hayes. And I need to make a correction there. It was not. Uh, I completely lost my train of thought. But Phaneuf gets rocked. My word, a huge punch, and he's having trouble getting up. That is not a good sight for Leaf fans. But it was David Clarkson who got hit, not Joffrey Lupul. My bad. And as you see, vicious right hand. But Phaneuf seems to be okay for right now. He's not going into the locker room to be concussion tested. And he seems to be fine. But the faceoff will go to center ice. Seabrook with the puck. Turning back around. Passing it to his defensive pair mate. I know I said it again. Duncan Keith. But now. The puck goes into Toronto Maple Leaf zone. Gardner up to James Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk. Deeks around his man. Gets around the outside. And a nice shot. But that's turned away by Javi Boulin again. One minute left in the third period. We may be heading to overtime. Franz in a nice slap shot. But that's turned away by Boulin Wall. Let's take another look at that Franz in slap shot. That was actually a tough one to save. He's got a wicked slap shot. But a nice glove save from the Boulin Wall. A tired Jonathan Tace will take the draw against Tyler Bozak. Will he win it? No. Back to Franz and Franz and getting around it. Patrick Kane. A nice wrist shot, but that's turned away by the Boulin Wall. Seabrook up to Taves now with the puck. Sorry, I missed who the pass went up to, but Kessel steals it from him. Coming into the Chicago Blackhawks zone. A nice wrist shot, but that's turned away. A nice short side opportunity for Phil Kessel. But Habby Boulin was there to stop him. Nikolai Habby Boulin has been on fire tonight. Not much has been able to stop, but beat him. But Randy Carlisle sends out his third line, the only line to score on him so far. But the draw is lost by Boland. They have some good defensive players on that line, though, which is also oh, why he may have sent them out. But here comes Boland. 15 
the pass was intercepted, and that will likely mean the end of the period as Keith is just going to waste out the clock. Oh no, Boland takes a tripping penalty at the end of the third. Oh no, that's going to be bad for the Leafs. Two minutes. That's not going to be good. Two minutes in overtime with a penalty. Four on three. That's not good. That's all I can say. But at the end of regulation, it's 1-1. One, one. Welcome back here to the final period of play. And no, it's not the third. It's overtime. It is a four on three for the Chicago Blackhawks to start the period. Three men in the box. Boland and Fanuth for the Leafs and Jimmy Hayes for the Blackhawks. But McClement out there to try to kill the penalty along with Frazier and Gardner. The puck is dumped in and Gardner receives it. And he's going to dump it down. And McClement in a chase for the puck with Nick Letty. Who will get there first? McClement lets up to let Letty get it instead of maybe getting blown by. And an errant pass goes up to Jonathan Taves. Taves up to Keith. Keith passes up to Taves. And Taves trying to get a man. Oh no, we're having some technical troubles. Sorry about that. Our camera start stopped working for a second. But now, Taves with the puck. We didn't miss much, except for that huge hit on Franz and Wow. By Franz and Wow. Nick Letty push on and he scores! The Leafs lose this game 2 1 in overtime. A very nice slap shot from the point by Nick Letty to win the game. He's been dangerous all night. Nobody was there to stop that, to block that shot. Franzen tried to get there, but was too far away. And Reimer probably should have stopped that one. Nobody was in front of him to screen it. But thank you for watching this game. If you want to see what's happening later on with maybe the Leafs captain or something, stay later in this episode as there will be more dealing that. But if you do not want to, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Toronto Maple Leafs captain Dion Phaneuf has been suspended five games for this late hit on Blackhawks forward Marion Hossa. Dion will not appeal the suspension, although thinking the penalty is harsh. I give him props for manning up to his mistake, said Leafs GM Eric Wallowitz. After being asked about uh, appealing the suspension. But now it's me to you talk about some of the stuff that we've done in the wake of the suspension. So I'm, I'm not doing the broadcast perspective anymore. I'm not doing a reporter um, perspective anymore right now. I'm talking to you as if I were the GM in which I am in this series. So, we made a few changes to the roster. First, after I decided to suspend um, enough five games for that hit, um, that was a pretty vicious hit. I think he'd get five games or more for that in real life. But, um, after that, we had to make a change. And so, I wanted to sign somebody because Trade for somebody, sorry. Because Fanuf being out, Gunnarsson being out, meant that our top six was this. Friends and Gardner, top pair. I'm, I'm okay with that for the time being. But the bottom six is where it gets iffy. Paul Ranger, Mark Frazier, TJ Brennan, and uh, Kevin Marshall. 79, 78, 78, and 71. And I could call up Lyles, but I, do, I can't because he has too much cap on him, and I, it, the game won't let me call him up. So, I, I didn't think that was strong enough to go for with five games. So, what I did was I traded some cap. I traded John Michael Lyles 
to the Calgary Flames in exchange for a 2014 fourth round pick. And so I'm suspecting that fourth round pick to basically be a late third round pick. Which will get us a decent player. And now, I just briefly want to go over something with you guys while I have the opportunity to. When it comes to signing draft picks, I'm going to sign any of my draft picks that are 60 overall plus. Which is similar to what they do in real life, except they don't have an overall. If they're playing well, they get signed, right? So if, for example, my first round pick is a 54 overall, I won't sign him until he's 60 plus. Unless he's like four and a half green start or something. But we traded Lyles to Calgary for the 14 fourth round pick. And that cleared up 2.5 million for us to sign somebody so i went into free agency and i looked for a young defenseman who was low 70s sorry high 70s low 80s that was young that still had space to grow that was looking for a two-way contract so when his stint with the nhl was done we could send him back to the minors to help out the marlies only player that i could find that was fitting my bill was former Carolina Hurricane Bobby Sanguinetti. Three and a half red stars, 78 overall. I gave him a contract offer that was point five five zero thousand dollars So $500,000 basically. Just above the lowest that you can offer a player. Sorry, my throat has been hurting today. So that's why I've been drinking water through this commentary. But... Then a day later, an email pops up saying, "Would you like to, uh, would you like to, uh, claim Keaton Ellerby off waivers?" And I pondered this pretty hard because he's six foot four, two hundred seventeen pounds. He's good for the third D pair. I haven't been liking how T.J. Brennan's been playing, so I can send Brennan back down to the AHL. I can keep Paul Ranger up. I've already sent down Kevin Marshall as we did decide to claim Keaton Ellerby. But, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking of keeping Ellerby on the actual roster, on the NHL roster, as he could fill in for TJ Brennan. So, that's what we're going to do. When. Enough comes back. All I have him is Spatch right now, but when he comes back, we're gonna send TJ Brennan down. I, I don't really care if he's on a one way contract and he gets claimed, he hasn't been playing that well. I haven't been liking how he's played. And then we'll keep Fraser and Ranger on the roster as well with Leo Komarov. So that's just to brief you guys up with the moves that we've made. I'd like to thank you for watching this episode, if you've made it this far. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and have a good day. Goodbye.